Whenever you're ready, go ahead. Alright, behold the computer of the future. No, I'm just missing a cord. Oh. It's okay, do leave it go. No, I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so basically, we're having eight Picos cooperate to compute the Mandelbrot set and send the data back to a central Pico, where it's then displayed on the VGA monitor. So the, it uses um, the I2C communication protocol, which uh -huh. is kind of suboptimal for this, but the computation of the Mandelbrot kind of proves to be the bottleneck for computing this at this point. So could you, if possible, could you give just a little bit of background of, of what the Mandelbrot set is and how it's calculated? Um, <laughs> <laughs> so in short, it's a it's a computationally intensive thing to to compute, right? Yeah. Good. And am I correct that what you're doing is distributing that computation across one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cores? Did I miscount? Uh, eight well, cores. That eight? time, yeah, eight. Well, There's eight. sixteen cores, eight units. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So each core has either. Um, the top half of the screen or the bottom half of the screen, basically, and then this, the amount of the comp of the Mandelbrot set that's being computed is evenly distributed on all the cores that we have available. Right. So you have eight picos. Each pico has two cores, mm -hmm. and so you're distributing the pixels on the VGA screen across each core in each pico mm -hmm. to accelerate rendering the whole screen. Yeah, that's right. <clears throat> and how much of a speed up are you seeing, like as compared to say, you know, well, one Pico? Compared to a single Pico, we're getting about a 4x speed up with eight Picos. So part of the, part of the discrepancy is, you know, com part of, partially communication. Uh -huh. And also there might be some synchronization because some of the Picos get their task before others slightly. Sure. Yeah. And so, let's see. It appears to be, am I correct that it's this Pico here that's controlling the VGA screen? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then all of the others are <clears throat> communicating color information for their assigned pixels over, did you say I2C? Yep. Yeah. Okay. And there's a, a DMA channel set up to just capture whatever's in the I2C channel and just put it up on the screen. So it takes almost no CPU time to get things on the screen. Yeah, which is important because the main projector unit is still doing math. Okay, okay. Oh, interesting. So as soon as something appears in the DMA channel of the device responsible for driving the screen, a DMA channel just whisks it like, off to the... Like something in the I2C channel, then the DMA puts it on the screen. Right, okay. Well, the DMA moves it to a place in memory, which calls it, and then calls an interrupt to the processor. Okay. That services it. It's really nice. Can you restart it one more time just so... Because it's you can sure. sort of see the distribution of the pixels across the cores, right? Mm -hmm. Am I correct that they they appear to be sort of distributed column wise? Yeah. Yeah. And then you can see that. And it looks like the missed another core. Yeah. yeah. And then the columns that include lots of <laughs> pixels that are in the set take longer to compute. Mm -hmm. So. Right, so that, that's why we, um, instead of using chunks of the screen like this, we kind of had them compute in a certain stride. So you're sort of trying to load balance across the, the different uh, yeah. cores, yeah. gotcha. Which is especially important around like bottleneck portions like you were talking about, like the pull of the fractal. Yeah. And let's say I disable a, a Pico by holding its power button and yeah. it computes. It'll just dynamically know that it's th there's only seven available and distribute it across what it has available. Yeah. And oh, it should wow. Say 14 cores. Yep. Awesome. Oh, so it figures out how many cores are available when it starts up. Yep. Mm -hmm. How does it do that? Over the I2C? Yeah. Device? So it's kind of counterintuitive because our central pico is the only one that isn't like an i2c master okay uh, every other pico on this network is a master um and essentially at the beginning they'll request this pico for an address okay. so okay. each of the peripherals issues a, a read on this and it ends <clears throat> each of the peripherals issues a read or sorry each of the masters issues a read on the master 
which then gives them a unique ID that they can be identified by. And then after the IDs are distributed, they then issue a read to get the total number that's on the network. Okay. Yeah, because the idea is if the number of peripherals is unknown, there's no way this could read or write to all of them. So if these are made masters and are able to uh, initiate communication with the central projector, then uh -huh. that solves that issue. That's able to keep your town centrally. Sure. Wow. That's very impressive. So about a 4x speed up with distributed across 8 picos, 16 cores. Mm -hmm. Wow. Very cool. Awesome.